What's a metaphysical theory? It's a possible description of the hidden reality behind what we can observe. Surely there is such a hidden reality. It would be astonishing if the only things that exist are those we can see, especially since what we can see has increased over time. We now have telescopes and microscopes and space probes and x-rays and many other tools which make visible previously hidden realms. There must be, there are, further hidden realms we still cannot see. But can we speak meaningfully about what we can't observe? Is there such a thing as a useful metaphysical theory? Some people say no, that there is no meaning to speaking about what can't be seen. And certainly there are many bad metaphysical theories that tend to junk up any discussion. But I hope to convince you that metaphysics can indeed be meaningful and useful and maybe even beautiful. Let's distinguish metaphysical theories from two other types of rational theories. On the one hand, there are logical and mathematical theories. With these, we draw logically inescapable conclusions from a set of definitions. For example, we can define what we mean by a circle and then prove that the circumference of a circle divided by its diameter is always this specific number pi. There's no debating that, it's just true, but on the other hand, a perfect circle is an abstraction that doesn't exist in reality. So we could say that mathematical theories are absolutely true statements about things that don't exist. Fortunately, many things that do exist are quite close to these abstractions, making mathematics hugely useful. On the other hand, of course, there are scientific theories. These do deal in observable reality. We propose a set of rules describing some phenomenon and then check to see if the predictions made using the rules agree with what's observed. The most exciting evidence for the correctness of a scientific theory is when it makes a prediction about something that hasn't yet been observed. One example is James Clerk Maxwell's prediction of radio waves in 1867 and as a part of his overall theory of electromagnetism. It took 20 years to 1887 for this prediction to be experimentally verified by Heinrich Hertz, but when it was, it was dramatic evidence that Maxwell's whole theory was correct. But what if sufficiently sensitive instruments had shown that the waves predicted by Maxwell did not exist? Then his electromagnetic theory would have been shown to be wrong. It would have been falsified. For a theory to be scientific, it must be falsifiable in this way. It must be possible to make observations that could show the theory to be incorrect if it is incorrect. One famous falsified theory is the idea of the spontaneous generation of life, the theory that bacteria or flies, say, emerge directly from non-living matter. This idea was only conclusively shown to be false by experiments in the mid-19th century, notably by Louis Pasteur. Metaphysical theories are not mathematical, not true by definition, nor are they scientific theories which can be tested by observation and perhaps falsified. But a third type of rational theory, which attempts to explain what we observe, but which can't be tested or falsified, at least not yet. The theory of multiverses, the theory that many, perhaps all possible universes exist, is a metaphysical theory, since our universe is defined to be everything that we can observe, but only what we can observe. Other universes, if they do exist, by definition can't be observed, and so their existence can't be demonstrated or falsified. Another metaphysical theory is that we might live in some kind of simulation, that everything we are and experience is really computer software existing in some larger universe. How could this ever be proved or disproved? Metaphysics tends to get a bad name, to be ridiculed, for two reasons. One is the effect of the long birth struggle of science. It took centuries to establish that scientific theories are the best method to learn the true workings of what we observe. 
a struggle that perhaps is not entirely over even today. Science needed to carefully differentiate itself from metaphysics, and one way to do that was to just reject metaphysical thinking altogether. You'll sometimes hear that an idea is not scientific as a way to reject it entirely, which can be unfair. Not all meaningful ideas are scientific ideas. And then there are, of course, many metaphysical theories that are just bad, just lacking in meaningful content or simply in service of some kind of delusional thinking. Since metaphysical theories can't be tested as rigorously as mathematical or scientific theories, more nonsense tends to be entertained. One kind of bad metaphysical theory is the just-so story, where one unobservable idea explains just one thing we can observe, like the story that leopards have spots because in the mythical past they were printed on with muddy fingertips, or that rainbows reflect an ancient promise of goodwill by a sky god. Modern bad metaphysical theories include all kinds of complex systems of supernatural powers that often reflect more about the psychology of the believer than any other aspect of reality. But how can I, or anyone, judge a metaphysical theory to be bad if it can't be tested? And what's the value of a good metaphysical theory? The philosopher Karl Popper proposed three criteria. First, a metaphysical theory should explain observations and explain them more simply or more comprehensively than other theories. Just so stories are bad because they aren't simple. Each explanation requires believing an additional, unobserved new thing. And the theory should not simply regress the problem, like the old idea that the world rests on the back of a turtle, standing on another turtle, and so on. The idea of multiverses is good metaphysics because, although untestable, it is a part of a number of theories that do make testable and correct predictions. Second, a good theory should not contradict other good metaphysical theories. And third, a metaphysical theory should be fruitful. It should give rise to ideas and ways of picturing the world that suggest testable scientific theories. The atomic theory, that all matter is composed of discrete subunits, was a part of metaphysics for thousands of years, at least from the time of the ancient Greeks. Until about the 19th century, there was no known way to test this idea, and its validity was debated. Chemists tended to be in favor of it, and physicists against, with no real way to decide what was correct. It was metaphysical. But in 1905, Einstein published a paper quantitatively explaining Brownian motion, the jiggling of microscopic particles, as due to molecular impacts which provided convincing evidence that atoms do exist, moving the atomic theory out of metaphysics and into science. So the metaphysical atomic theory was fruitful. It led directly to the scientific theory of atoms. Humans have always tried to understand the nature of reality, and so there has always been metaphysics. Much of religion consists of metaphysical explanation. It's easy to criticize many of these ideas today as bad metaphysics, such as that the world was created in seven days. But ancient humans were just as intelligent and just as thoughtful as we moderns are. They just had less information about the world and themselves to work with. The earliest metaphysical idea seems to be animism, the idea that all objects, rivers and trees and winds and so on, contain resonant spirit personalities. This way of viewing the world may well be inborn in humans. Animism led to polytheism, and then to the monotheism of Akhenaten and Moses, and then to various attempts to further rationalize religious thinking, such as those of Augustine and Aquinas and Martin Luther. Each stage surely represented not merely error, but an increasingly better attempt to make sense of the world. In light of new knowledge and understanding, 
as well as probably the demands of the material culture and political structures of the time. For all we know, our current science-oriented metaphysics will seem equally quaint in a few thousand years. Metaphysical theories need not be only about the physical world. There can also be a metaphysics of mind, sometimes called metapsychology, regarding those aspects of mind which can't be observed. Most of Freud's ideas, for example, are not scientific, but metapsychological, since we don't know how to prove or disprove them, for one thing, because they don't make unique predictions. According to Freudian theories, a man may treat his wife with warmth and kindness because he loves her, or instead, because he hates her and is using his kind behavior to conceal his true feelings from himself, a process known as reaction formation. So according to this theory, seeing the kindness alone doesn't tell us whether the unseen feelings are love or hatred. But just because the Freudian theory of mind is not scientific does not mean it does not have value. It's the basis for the best ideas we have about how unconscious aspects of the mind work and is very likely in some sense correct. And it may point to ways that someday the hidden depths of the mind can become observable, just as the atoms did.